This is the show where you get to talk to your favorite artists live. Now, our toll-free number is 1-800-344-ROCK, and that's 1-800-344-7625. And if your call gets on the air, you'll receive a box of Sony Metal SR audio cassettes, courtesy of Sony Recording Media. Now, my guests tonight, live via satellite from our Rockline studios in New York City, are Sebastian Bach and Rachel Bolin of Skid Row. Everything's been done in hard rock, heavy metal. That's the music we love, that's the music we play. So if we can do anything different at all, like a video like 18 in Life or something, uh, then that's what we'll do. A lot of videos we see sometimes don't really have a lot of energy, you know, a lot of boom. make the video to suit the song. It's uh, not a love song. I'll just leave it at that. You can't really rehearse for, you know, playing an arena show because once you, once you get up there, you just forget everything because it's just like an adrenaline rush. It's like a lightning, you know, bolt going right down your back. We're sick and tired of saying, yeah, we're really heavy live in comparison to our record. This year, our record is just as heavy as we are live. And the record he was referring to was Slave to the Grind. And Sebastian and Rachel, hi. Welcome to Rockline. Hi. How's the, tour, how's the tour going? <laughs> oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> it's great. It's about to say like Tony the Tiger. No, it's going real good. Last time we played Nassau in Long Island. And where do we go tomorrow? Maryland. Maryland, in, Baltimore. Uh, the Cap Center, two they're, nights. They're going all over the country with Guns N' Roses, and we've got them for the next 30 minutes. So not only do I have a lot of questions to ask you, but people all across the country. And we're going to get right into it with Bridget, who is calling from Detroit, Michigan. Bridget, welcome to Rockline, and say hello to Sebastian and Rachel. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Bridget. What's happening? Whereabouts do you live in uh, Detroit? Pardon? Whereabouts do you live in Detroit? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. He was asking, where in Detroit do you live, Bridget? I'm at Northside Tiger Stadium. Okay, I used to live in, in Royal Oak. You know where that is, Royal Oak? Oh, yeah, I hang out in Royal Oak. I go to school there. Yeah, I, so I didn't Bridget, go to school there. <laughs> what's your question, Bridget? I was just wondering, I really like Slave to the Grind and the sound on it. And um, did you go into writing Slave to the Grind wanting it to have that heavier sound, or did it just come out that way? I think from all this stuff, that we listen to, it definitely came out that way. We're not really a band that plans on too much, you know, but it, it, the stuff that we listen to, like Cro-Mags and Motorhead, I think came out a little more on this record, well, a lot more on this record than it did on the first. So, Bridget, yeah, thank we, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sebastian. We wanted a, a heavier guitar sound, if that's what you're saying. You know, we were pretty happy with the vocals and the bass and, and the drums on the first record, but we wanted much more of an, an attack. Yeah. on the guitars, and Michael Wagner's really good. <coughs> and Something. you record, you recorded the album in Fort Lauderdale. Why did you go all the way down there? Because it was warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time you recorded in, in Wisconsin, and I know that's not the case out there. You go no. to... Well, we went to Wisconsin this summer, but we started recording this one in February. So New York City isn't exactly the warmest place to be in January, February. So we said, let's go to Florida. We can well, do these like, things. It's uh, like Wisconsin, Fort Lauderdale. Wisconsin, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Okay, well, Bridget, thank you very much for calling, and we're going to move to Virginia now, Woodbridge to be specific, with Renee, who's waiting to say hello. Go ahead, Renee, what's your question? Um, hi, Sebastian. Hi, Martha. Um, Rachel and Martha. Uh, Martha, I wanted to say I really love Rockline. I'm glad it's back. Thanks a lot. Um, and, Sebastian, I was wondering, um, how was the writing in this album since you did a lot more of it this time? How was it? Yeah. It was fun. I mean, you know. I, I could have did some on the first record, but I really didn't have any songs to write. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> these guys had it all covered. But uh, since we had, you know, no tunes coming out of the first record for this one, we all kind of, you know, put our best ideas in. And out comes the record, the thing from the recording studio. And it's, uh, you know, the next record, we're already starting working on the next one now. So You're kidding me. Well, we've been on the road two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to start looking ahead. Thank you, yeah. Renee. That's a good call. And Jennifer's waiting from Boston, Mass. 
Jennifer, welcome to the Bastard. show. Say hi. 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 How are you? We're Massachusetts. Good. How's Massachusetts doing? What? How ma what? How's Massachusetts? Okay. <laughs> cool. Mm. We've had wondering. some wild times there. What? We've had some weird and wild times in Massachusetts. Yeah, I know. Um, I was just wondering how you guys feel about um, your pictures being in, like, teeny bopper magazines. And does that really upset you because they only care about what you look like and not about the music? Because I personally cannot stand that. Well, like Hot Metal Doom Stud Monthly and those <laughs> kind of magazines, uh, it doesn't make us upset, you know. Uh, obviously, when someone comes up to you and says, I really like your music or I really like your voice or I really like your, you know, your band, that means a lot more than, uh, oh, look at your hair, you know. Sometimes I want to just shave it, but then I say, no, I don't. I want to have it long, you know, so. But if you're asking, does it upset us? I don't think upset. No, no. definitely not. But I'd rather be in like, uh, you know, a music magazine than pop metal rock guy, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Jennifer, but, you know, th Jennifer, can't really thank complain. <laughs> can't complain. It's better than working at the gas station. Jennifer, thank you for calling. That was good. <laughs> Thanks for that, Mark. It's hard. It's so hard because th these guys are in the studio and they can't see me, so it, it's hard to not sort of jump all over each other. You, um, we're going to go to a commercial, and when we come back, we're going to talk, Sebastian, a little bit more about uh, Massachusetts since you brought it up. We're going to take a lot more calls. And right. our toll-free number is 1-800-344-ROCK, and that's 1-800-344-7625. Uh, hardly I need to introduce our guests, but they are Sebastian Bach and Rachel Bowen of Skid Row, so don't go away. Hi, welcome back to Rockline on MTV. Our guests are Sebastian Bach and Rachel Bolin of Skid Row. If you have a question, call us up. Our toll-free number is 1-800-344-ROCK. Sebastian, what happened the other night? There was a guy who, who jumped up on stage and the road crews were pushing him off and you stopped it. Something went down and the stacks all fell over. Yeah, I almost died. What happened? That. <laughs> Nothing really happened. Tell well, I just saw this guy come up and he was singing with me and, you know, I, I think that's fun and cool. And, uh, he went like over to to get Scotty or something, and you know, a whole bunch of guys came out to tackle him, and uh, I kind of you know wanted to get them off him, and we ended up crashing into a big PA stack. But you know, it's even funnier since we showed that on TV. Um, the uh, owner of the place up there wants to sue us for fifty thousand dollars for showing it on TV. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Where did this take place? Uh, Saratoga, upstate New York. Ay ay ay. Yeah. You have had some bad road luck, you guys. Dean, well, it's been interesting. It's not boring, I'll tell you that. No, it certainly doesn't seem so. Dina <clears throat> is calling from New Haven, Connecticut, uh, on the line to say hello. Dina, what's your question? Hi, guys. How you doing? How you doing, what's Gina? Happening? Pretty good. Okay, my question is, do you have any plans for a new home video? Not really. Not as of yet, no. We've no. got to accumulate some footage first. Yeah, we're not just going to put out, like, the same five videos you've seen on MTV a hundred times just so we can, you know, make a little bit of money, you know. We're going to, if we do do one, it'll be something that you've never seen before, like our last one. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. We'll wait for the new uh, home video, which probably at some point I would imagine there would be one. And Amy is calling another Massachusetts call this time from Brandon. Go ahead, Amy. Hi, guys. Hi, Amy. Hey. hey. And we looked at the album, that we wondered, um, why aren't there any thank yous on it? Because if we were to thank everybody, we'd have to add, like, another eight panels, you know? <laughs> and plus, if you leave one person out on a thank you, like, oh, man, you're a big rock star now. How come you didn't thank me, you know? And it's like, forget the thank yous. The people that... People know, you know, if you like them or not. Yeah, we probably had twice as many this time as we did on the first record, and there was, like, I don't know, 300 on the first record, so... So it just said a bit much, but everyone knows. Yeah. We thank you, Amy. If you <laughs> there you go, Amy. You got your own personal thanks. And Brandy's waiting on the line from Oakland, California. Brandy, you're on. Go ahead. Hey, you guys. I love you both. Thank thanks. you. Okay, my question is: Are you guys worried that your new album won't do as well as your last one? No. I mean, if it does, that's great. If it does better, it's great. If it doesn't, at least we know we could go to bed thinking that we did a great record. You know, we're all really happy with it. So that kind of stuff really doesn't worry us. So people say, do you feel a lot of pressure following up a successful record? And I always say, I would feel a lot more pressure if the first one sold nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We say, no, somebody's going to buy it. If they don't like the music, you can always use it for a Frisbee you know, <laughs> or a coaster. Or coaster, yeah. You know, CDs make great coasters, by the way. <laughs> If you don't like it, just put your coffee cup down in there. I have well, a couple what was the record company's response when you gave them the record? It's very different from the first one. They said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
you know. Okay. There was no response to the fact that there weren't songs like uh, I'll Remember You. It's a little less accessible. It's a lot harder than the first one. I think that people underestimate the intelligence of, like, rock listeners, you know? They, they think that they want to hear the exact same song written by the exact same three people with the exact same solo and the same whoa, whoa chorus or anything. I think that, you know, the music that we grew up on in the 70s, like, Aerosmith and Ted Nugent and Van Halen. I never heard like my favorite songs on the radio, you know. I don't, I don't think that that's something that you could try to second guess, so I, I have to, you know, have this formula so I can be on, you know, this radio station at this part of the day. I'd rather just put on a, a you know, a tape in my car that makes me drive really way too fast. You mm -hmm. know? Those are my favorite records. All right. Michael's waiting on the line from Wilmington, North Carolina. Michael, go ahead. You're on with Sebastian and Rachel. Yo, what's Michael, up? how you doing? Hey, dude. All right. I was wondering if the lyrics for 18 in life were inspired by personal conflict. Uh, no, not really. We just uh, decided to write something about, like, uh, you know, someone that you might have went to school with. Because I think we all know the, the, the character in that song. I think we all know someone like him. And what the strange story is, is that there was a kid from Snake's hometown named Ricky. And we didn't even know it at the time when we wrote it. It, it was pretty much his kid's life story. So we like heard from his family and stuff, and they thought it was actually about him, but it was just about a person like him. Wow. All right, Michael, thank you very much for the call. Let's move down to Naples, Florida, where Shyla is waiting on the line. Go ahead, Shyla. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Hey. Hi. How's it in Florida today? I'm fine. Cool. It's <clears throat> raining here. What? What's your, it's raining here. What's your question? Um, I was wondering, <laughs> what led you to choose the cover to Slave to the Grind? Uh, that's a painting that my father did. My dad, who's an artist, lives in Canada. And he took an uh, um, old Caravaggio piece called, uh, what the hell is it called? Joe DiMaggio? Yeah, Joe DiMaggio. Oh. And um, we, uh, Rachel and I, I had the idea of putting like all the song, characters from all the songs in the record into this piece. And it shows a guy like fighting because he's being beat into the dirt. And he's, you know, he's got like a psycho look in his eyes. He's trying to get out, you know? So it's like, if you become a slave to the grind, if you let, you know, everybody tell you that what you have to do is get a job and then have a whole bunch of kids and just do the exact same thing, work at the factory for the rest of your life, you're like missing out, you know, you're a slave. And also in the music industry, if you let every single person try to run your band and tell you what to sing and what to say and, you know, how to think, then you're a slave to that grind. So we're or saying, perhaps to say that the second be. record should be similar to the first one. Exactly. Right. We're not interested in regurgitating I Remember You 18 million times. Although, the next record could be all I Remember You. If that's what we're feeling at the time, that's what we'll do. It's not going to be, you know, fake or something that somebody thinks that we should do that's wearing a three-piece suit, you know. I can't see that. <laughs> Shyla, thank you very much for calling. Emily's calling from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Emily, go ahead. You're on with Sebastian and Rachel. How you doing? Hi, What's hi how you doing? Uh, this is Emily, and I'm, um... From Milwaukee. So, uh, first of all, I went to the kickoff of your tour with Al at Alpine Valley with Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Cool. I just loved your performance. It was really Thanks. good. Great. Did you go to the first night or the second night? I went the first night. Cool. <laughs> um, also, I live pretty close to the area where you filmed your last video, Monkey Business. Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was just wondering um, why you chose that particular place, place to do the filming. Because well, we that's where the film crew's from. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it, we, uh, that was actually in the area called Skid Row in Chicago. And uh, we, we, we used these guys called H-Gun, who had never done a real big, you know, hard rock video. And um, there's, they're, they're just these, like, psycho art students from uh, Chicago. The guy that directed it's got a mohawk and stuff. And, you know, he's like, oh, I got to get this atmosphere right and this texture and all these things. He's like, very creative guys. And we're happy the way, the way it came out because it doesn't look like really any other videos, which is what we wanted. Yeah, I got the feeling that it was almost more like the record. It was raw. It was, just, you know, there wasn't a lot of, like you say, a lot of, the, you know, pretty stuff. It was just out there, you know, singing, and the shots were something all different. And yeah, they're, they're very, very, very amazing bizarre. directors. They're called H-Gun. They're going to do our next couple. Everyone who worked on that crew right. was so incredible. H-Gun is very happy because they got a plug tonight. You're watching Rockline yeah. on MTV. <laughs> uh, Sebastian and Rachel will be back. I hope you